So this is my server rack. And of course I've got all my networking stuff on the top. Uh, yeah, Synology device down there, PC, more NASAs and a uh, battery backup UPS down there in the bottom. Kind of hard to see, but you're just gonna have to trust me there. Uh, if we come back up, the reason that we're taking a look at my network rack is specifically because of this FS uh, switch that's right here. This is the S3700-24. T4S, and the nice folks over at FS.com sent this over to me to review and uh, improve my network, and it, it definitely has done that. Here we can see that I've actually got basically all of uh, my network running through it. I do have another switch below it that I'm not currently using, uh, and everything looks pretty organized other than that yellow cable, but it is what it is, you know? So uh, basically, it is a 24-port managed switch. I am currently running it unmanaged, though I don't necessarily need VLANs and that sort of thing for my setup, but uh, it does support uh, it does support VLANs and, and all kinds of stuff like that. We'll take a look at the interface here in a little bit. Uh, but specifically the reason I wanted this, I was, I was super stoked uh, that they reached out to talk to me about uh, checking out their products, but specifically because uh, of these four ports right there, uh, this one, or basically the, these four, uh, let me find, there we go, these four ports, these two and those two, uh, because those are all 10 gig SFP plus, ports and, and I really wanted to be able to connect um, my PC, uh, which of course, come on, refocus, there it goes. Uh, my PC down there and my Synology device, I wanted those running on 10 gig networks or a 10 gig network rather, so that when it's time to back up uh, videos that I'm done with, that sort of thing, I can do it at more than, you know, the 112 megs that you get out of a one gig connection. I will say I did run in to a couple of issues when I first got it. Um, and I'm actually gonna cut to some some old some older footage uh, of that now. And the reason I even, I'm, I'm, I'm even making this little section of the video is because of how loud this device is. Now this is, um, of course, sitting literally right next to my desk uh, where I make all of my videos. So uh, I'm gonna actually have to take this thing apart uh, and unplug the fan on the back. Um, just because it, it's it's just it's too loud, um, and the interface gives no way to uh, to manage the fan speed. But it's just it's too loud. I can't have this going on next to me. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble it and uh, take the or unplug the fan anyway and see if there's something I can do there. Okay, so I've gone ahead and unplugged uh, everything over here, uh, so I can pull this out just so we can kind of take a look at the back. And right there is our culprit. Uh, that's what's making all of the noise. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and unplug that. And there, there's some underlying like coil line or something there. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna take this thing apart, see if I can't uh, fix that issue there. Okay, so I got all the screws out. Uh, well, all except for uh, that one. And of course there's one under there that says, uh, warranty void if seal's broken. So uh, let's void our warranty uh, and get this screw out so we can take this off and look around inside a little bit. So uh, the reason they don't obviously want you to take this apart for, I mean, lots of reasons really, but I think the biggest reason is if we open this up, I'm gonna be careful here. Um, I, I disconnected this fan. That was, that was something else entirely, but uh, because they've got an exposed power supply there. Uh, so you wanna be very, very careful with that. Um, I, I'm sure they did it for, for cooling and whatnot, uh, just to help keep the power supply a little cooler, but uh, but yeah, that's that's probably the biggest reason why they don't want you to open this up. Uh, here we can see that they've got a couple of uh, a pretty good sized heat sinks here. Uh, here is the uh, the connector for our fan. Uh, it looks like it's just a, a three pin fan there. That's going to get unplugged because I, I don't want to listen to it. But uh, here you can see uh, that's where all of your, your bandwidth is going to go through there. Uh, you got your controllers. <clears throat> and of course, you got your 10 gig over there. Uh, pretty, I mean, it, it looks really good. It's super clean. I'm not seeing anything too out of the ordinary here, I don't think. Um, of course, we've got our recessed power, or our recessed reset button there. You know, all of this looks pretty, pretty standard, all things considered. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and get this taken out, hopefully. There we go. Um, <clears throat> and then if I need to, I will uh, come up with some way to, to replace this. I'll see if I, maybe I can find another... Uh, another uh, brushless uh, fan to put in here. Uh, maybe I'll find a Noctua or something that I can splice into this wiring harness so that uh, so that it doesn't sound like a jet engine uh, while it's on, which of course would hopefully be all of the time uh, for my 10 gig connectivity between my PC and my Synology device. So uh, now that I've removed the fan, um, if I bring my phone in real close. <laughs> 
The fans you're actually hearing there are uh, from the Synology device and my PC. Uh, again, it is super dark down there for some reason with this. Anyway, so all of the fan noise you're hearing uh, is coming from the PC down there, the Synology device. Uh, there are no fans uh, in this FS.com. And of course, I was a little bit apprehensive about doing that, um, but it's been, it's been probably a month that I've had this thing up and running with no fan in it. Uh, and I've had no issues. I've had no slowdowns. I've had no bottlenecks. I've had no issues at all with it. So overall, this FS uh, 3700 has been has been super solid for me. Uh, I get tons and tons of uh, throughput with this. Uh, I'll throw some numbers up on the screen as far as uh, what what kind of bandwidth you can expect to get with one of these. But again, my my primary goal here uh, was to get 10 gig networking. Um, set up for, for archiving, things like that. Um, I do have a couple more SFP port or SFP plus uh, modules coming for those last two uh, ports over there that are gonna go to uh, a couple of my other uh, NAS devices down here, uh, just so that I can get a better connection for, for backing up servers and that sort of thing uh, across the network on 10 gig. Well, two and a half gig instead of one gig. Uh, it will just make things a little bit nicer in there. So I should also mention that my PC that's down here uh, is a is an, uh, an Aorus B450 board, um, and it does not have uh, anything more than one gig on it. Uh, so the folks over at FS.com were nice enough to send me uh, a, a, a 10 gig uh, two port card. That's an 8X PCI Express slot or slotted card rather. And uh, I've, I've had really, really good luck with it. Uh, it just, I, I had to install the drivers for it obviously. And once that was done, uh, I've been up and running solid with, with no issues. Okay, so this is the dashboard for our uh, for our switch that we've got set up. We've been looking at uh, here. We can see the product model. I don't know if that's actually correct, uh, but this is the, the firmware uh, that we've got here. The baud rate, the MAC address. Uh, we've got system status over here. We can see how long it's been up. Almost 19 days. CPU usage is at 35 percent. Memory usage at 12. Of course, those are going to change uh, depending on how it's being used. Uh, that's our system status, our user configuration. We can uh, change our password there if we want to. Can't change our name, our username. I'd like to see the, our, our ability to do that, but what do you do? Uh, time settings, I haven't actually got this set up. Um, I probably should, but I don't. Um, but basically, uh, that, that's where time settings are. We've got log management, uh, lots and lots of pages. Looks like there's still a little Chinese down there, but that's fine. We can log out. We've got port management, uh, configurations. So we've got port ranges and uh, port states. Uh, we can adjust our speeds, our flow control, our jumbo frames, uh, egress and ingress rates, and our description. We can see all of this stuff going on down here. Uh, we've got port mirroring options. If we wanted to do that, I love that. Uh, storm control, port protection, EAPS, uh, all of that's in here. We've got stuff for network for the IP configuration. Again, this is mostly gonna be for VLAN stuff, and I'm not gonna be using VLAN for any of this. We've also got static routes and ARP tables, uh, which I love seeing that in there as well. Uh, we've got link aggregation stuff. We've got VLAN stuff, lots of VLAN stuff in here. Uh, so you can break it up by, you know, memberships and configurations. We can do an IP subnet based VLAN or a Mac based VLAN or a protocol based VLAN. They've got a lot of great stuff in here. Uh, we've got a spanning tree protocols for STP and port configuration, as well as uh, both of those for information as well. SNMP uh, for management access groups and uh, trap configurations. MAC address tables, uh, you know, so you can, of course, these are the two devices that are currently plugged in uh, at the moment. Uh, you know, we've got Mac learning limit, Mac auto binding, Mac binding, uh, diagnostics for ping and trace route. Of course, I can't use any of that because I'm not connected to the internet. Uh, and the reason for that is uh, in order to get to this IP address, I actually had to go in and I uh, configure uh, my RJ45 one gig uh, network card to, uh, I just set up the IP address for my, for my uh, computer, the one we're on right now, the subnet mask, and then the default gateway was 1.1. I didn't put anything in for the DNS, but uh, once all of that was up and running, uh, then at that point I was able to come to this 1.1 address. Um, so that's, that's why I'm not able to do this is because I'm currently not connected to the internet whatsoever. And we've got maintenance stuff here as well as fact, like factory reset, reboot, reboot switch, and then backgrade and upgrade manager. Uh, I'm actually really glad I found this page because this is actually how uh, I upgraded the firmware when I got the device. When I first got the device, it had a, a Chinese firmware on it. And uh, so they, they were able to send me a, an English firmware and I was able to upload it right here instead of some of the uh, convoluted ways via CLI that I've seen uh, all over the internet. This was just an easier way for me to do it. So if you want to update it, you can absolutely do it that way. So uh, that's the software. It's very, very intuitive, very easy to use, but I just kind of wanted to give a quick run through on, on what the dashboard looked like uh, for, uh, for the FS uh, firmware. 
Okay, guys, so there you go. There is the S3700 24T4S from FS. I'd really want to give them a big shout out for sending this over and really making uh, my job a, a little easier, my networking uh, a bit more capable than it has been. Uh, lots of throughput, even through the one gigs, uh, as far as the back and forth and the, the, the things that they do there. So of course, the uh, the main reason I wanted this was for the 10 gig option uh, for my for my Synology and for my PC. Uh, also, I've got a couple of Terramaster devices that I want to plug in. Of course, they only support two and a half gig, but I am going to go ahead and, and uh, plug those into the 10 gig ports. Uh, I've got some more uh, modules coming for that. But again, I want to give a big shout out to uh, FS for sending this over and really helping me out. I'll try to put links to everything in the description down below so that you can uh, go pick up something like this. If it's not this, something different. But I will try to put links to everything in the description down below so that you can check this out and uh, see if maybe this is a good fit for your setup. But with that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I do want to thank you for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.